Joining me now, distinguished Senator Rick Scott of Florida. He's the head of the Republican Campaign Committee. Mr. Scott, thank you for coming back on. I just want to start off quickly. I know you're down in Florida right now, which has had a heck of a time with this horrible, disastrous hurricane. Um, how's the cleanup going? And I, I want to play uh, a quotation, if I can, from Vice President Kamala Harris about what she thought this cleanup should look like. Please take a listen, sir. It is our um, lowest income communities and our communities of color that are most impacted by these extreme conditions and, and impacted by, by issues that are not of their own making. And so we have to address this in a way that is about giving resources based on equity. Yeah, resources based on equity. Now, to be fair, uh, the FEMA people have denied this. So I'll just ask you, Senator Scott, what's really going on on the ground in the cleanup? Is everybody getting resources and assistance to clean up this dreadful hurricane? You know, these storms don't know skin color. They don't know uh, income levels. Uh, they, you know, they, they will kill everybody, uh, and they have. We have lost an unbelievable number of people. We're still doing rescue efforts. Uh, Larry, we're not even into the restoration. There's places where we're starting to do uh, the uh, recovery and restoration, but we're still in in uh, in rescue efforts. We've still got there's still a lot of missing people. Um, we've lost an unbelievable number of, of, of people. We've lost a lot of homes. Uh, we've got a lot of damage. So there's going to be this is going to be a lot of work. But the federal government's job is to be a partner with the state and the local government and treat everybody the same way. That means we all pay our taxes. We all get the support that our government should be giving us. And so I'm going to make sure that happens. Uh, I don't know what um, Vice President Harris was talking about. She looks at everything based on skin color, and that's wrong. You're right. She does. I mean, she said it again. She was out and about today at some conference saying very similar things. Every time she opens her yap, she puts her foot in, you know what. Uh, but, of course, the cavalry is coming to deal with that. Speaking of the cavalry, now, you're the head of the Senate Campaign Committee. Um, as Herschel Walker takes a lead, it's funny, all these latest polls are now showing likely voters. And as they show likely voters, all of a sudden, Republican advantages are opening up. Democrats are panicking left and right. Now, they are assaulting in Georgia. They're assaulting Republican Herschel Walker. Um, I know you've made a statement on that. Maybe you'll tell us and expand on it, please. Well, this is exactly what the Democrats do. They've, they've figured out they're going to lose. We're going to get 52 seats plus. Uh, the Biden agenda is completely being rejected all across the country. We have great candidates. Herschel's going to win, and they're starting to see. Herschel's going to win, so they're going to throw everything under the sun at him. Uh, I talked to Herschel today. Herschel is a great candidate. He's focused on the right issues. The Dem you know, Democrat Warnock has to defend all of his bad votes in the Biden agenda. That's, that's going to hurt Democrats all across the country. We're going to get the House, we're going to get the Senate, and we're going to start moving in a positive direction to get this economy going, make sure we have a great education system, keep this country safe. I believe that we're going to have a big win, and I'm excited that Herschel Walker will be one of my colleagues. Yeah, you know, let's see. The Monmouth polls out. It's a liberal poll, if anything. But again, they're using likely voters. This is for the generic ballot center, Scott. Maybe you saw this. Um, all of a sudden, 47 percent uh, voting for the GOP. Back in August, it was only 43. Democrats are down to 44 percent. Back in August, they were at 50. And you see this in a lot of the individual races. I'm not going to go through all of them. But as you do likely voters, all of a sudden, the tables are turned, and um, all that uh, business about Democrats uh, pulling ahead or pulling even doesn't look like it's the case. So, Larry, here's what we did. We defined the Democrats early. We didn't have to say, oh, they've got bad haircuts. No, what we said is they vote with Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden. The Biden agenda is very unpopular. In almost every swing state, Biden's approval rating is under 40. Every Democrat that we're running against in a competitive race, they're way under 50 because we define them. And we have great candidates. They've raised the money. We're helping them every day. I tell people, if you want to help, go to text WIN to 55404. That's how we're going to get more resources and have big wins. We're, we're, I think we're going to do really well. The Biden agenda is being completely rejected all across this country. It's a horrible agenda. Well, it's interesting. A lot of these polls are now saying, with clarity, the key issues, inflation, economy, crime. 
Boom, boom, boom. Okay, it's not abortion. It's not global warming. It's inflation, economy, and crime. Now, my last question to you, sir. You know, the um, commitment to America uh, by the House Republicans, I think, is pretty good. And one reason I like it so much is it emphasizes these key points. Inflation, economy, crime. And underneath that, you know, more tax cuts, more deregulation, and so forth, and tougher on crime and getting rid of these DAs. And also, there's a sleeper issue in there, the student loan cancellation and parents' Uh, parents' power in the schools. But the commitment to America, uh, your, your candidates in the Senate ought to use that thing. I mean, it hits on all the right points. Absolutely. I think, I think what Kevin McCarthy and his team have done, they put out a great uh, program. We've got, to, we've got to run on something. I put out my plan back in December. You can go to rescueamerica.com. But we've got to be a positive. We're going to fix this economy. We're going to make sure parents are involved in education. We're going to make sure you have school choice. We're going to make sure you live in a safe neighborhood. We're going to secure the border. We're going to have a lethal military. The, our military is there for one purpose, defend our freedom, be able, able to, to beat our opponents so they lose, we win. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> thank you for that. I can't, you know, I just can't let it slip by that the Bidens are saying, well, our negotiations with Iran is like Reagan's negotiations with the oh. Soviet Union. I mean, honestly, that's the most I mean, offensive, stupidest, dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well, I mean, the Iran, Iranian regime is killing their own, own citizens, one over just not wearing the right, you know, head scarf. And, and then we, the Biden administration wants to negotiate with them. Who would negotiate with terrorists like that? They're killing their own citizens. Same thing when he did it with Maduro. I mean, you go negotiate with these with these terrorist groups. I mean, they are terrorist organizations. They're killing their own citizens. They want to death. They they chant death to this country. We cannot be negotiating with them. What the Biden administration is doing in Latin America, in the Middle East, everywhere around the world is putting and making us less safe every day. That's not good for American families. Yeah, it may not be the biggest issue in this midterm campaign, but. Reagan understood negotiating from strength. He wouldn't even talk to the Soviets for his first term. Biden, in his first wow. term, has done nothing but weakness and uh, running around after the Iranians. Going to give them a couple hundred billion dollars. And, of course, none of that's verifiable either. I just wanted to bring that in. Makes my blood burn as an ex Reagan guy, but um, I know you understand it too. Anyway, last one. I always ask you this how many Senate seats are you all going to take? I think you were at 52 the last time. We're going to have 52 plus. We've got great candidates. We're, we're, we're competitive in Arizona, in New Hampshire, and Colorado, in um, Washington. Uh, so, I mean, in Leor Levy, your friend, you know, she's running a great race up in Connecticut. So yeah. we just got to keep fighting every day. We're going to have a great November. All right. I like 52 plus, sir. Senator Rick Scott, Florida. Thank you. Talk soon.